about the guys that I want, it's not too it's a potato, it's not too kids in a basement swapping piles, it's not too kids saying stick it to a man. They are organized crime. It's people like Jim.com who are hiding out in New Zealand. Do you think there's a way to regulate that would separate the malefactors from innocent share? Well, we haven't gotten the credit card company. Well, that's what we're doing. Is it the for profit part? It's a for profit part. If you knew that I said I loved Terminator, I want to give it to all my friends, and I found a way of just giving it away. I just love giving this thing away. What you know, you I, I, because I think that an uploader or a seer is also, I mean, part of the problem. But it's not something that we do. Our initiatives are to ask credit cards. So I, how it works is credit card companies are facilitating subscriptions to pirate sites. The other half of it is advertisers, Fortune 500 companies are advertising on pirate sites. Why? Because they actually don't know. When you're an advertiser, when you go to your ad agency, you say, I'm BMW and I want to get to 18 to 34 boys, males, okay? They're just digitally bought. They end up on pirate sites, right? Because that's where they are. So there's a quarter, 25% of the revenues going to pirate sites are from known major brands. So Creative Futures efforts have been to say to these known brands, you don't want to be on this. You know, when you when you make a buy, you say, I don't want to be in porn sites, I don't want to be in hate sites, I don't want to be in terror sites. You can also check a box that says, I don't want to be on copyright infringement sites. So Creative Future wrote a letter to the Advertising Association this summer saying, thank you for acknowledging that you have a problem. Because by the way, there was an article in the New York Times in May called The Great Unwatched. And it was about Johnson and Johnson, I think baby powder or baby oil. Anyhow, on porn sites, okay? <laughs> the last place that that organization would, you know, that company would want their products, right? Or perhaps they would. That's what they said, right? So they've all acknowledged that they don't want to be there. We, as an, as, as an industry, music, television, film, cannot give a list to advertisers of the sites that they should avoid. The Department of Justice said that's antitrust, okay? And fascinatingly enough, that the pirate sites can and operate with impunity, and we can't say, please don't be on Pirate Bay. But what has happened is third party operators have popped up companies, like almost like credit, uh, you know, union credit companies, saying, we can track where your ads go, and we can keep them off Pirate sites. So what does that do? Cuts 25% of the revenue on Pirate sites. That's a big chunk. But also makes the Pirate sites look not legitimate. We won't find an ad for BMW or Audi or ATT. Last week, we were in Redondo Beach at a PTA meeting talking with parents. One mother said, how do I know if a site's a pirate site or not? The fact is you don't, because if you look at them, some of them are gorgeous. They have just as nice an interface as Netflix. But if all you see on them are porn ads and Russian ride ads, you'll be pretty sure to know that it's probably not legitimate. So our efforts are to ask responsible corporations to come to the table and stop the facilitation of cap, you know, you know money to, to pirate sites. Why should they be making money off 